I'm Melody Peters. I'm president of AFT Connecticut, and I'm uh, so so proud to be here today. Um, this is an exciting time for for us and for our um, state employees. Um, we have won uh, from AFT, and this is the maiden voyage for this solution-driven uh, award. Uh, uh, one, we were one of two across the country uh, that won this award, so we're extremely proud, and it's because of all of you and the hard work that, that you uh, put into this. At the strength of our union, is based on the strength of our ideas and our ability to inspire participation and involvement. Involvement in solving problems and addressing challenges. AFT Connecticut is leading the way on improving employees' health outcomes and containing cost at the same time. So at AFT, uh, we kind of call this proactive problem solving and our term is solution-driven unionism. And I love that term because the local where I grew up, um, we were all about solution-driven unionism. I was mentored in that, and I know um, it just reaps so many accomplishments together. So we believe so strongly in this that under Randy's leadership, we created a special solution-driven unionism prize. So we invited our affiliates um, over 3,000 throughout the country affiliates to apply and demonstrate the value of their initiative, their program. This is the first year that the prize has been awarded. We received dozens of applications from affiliates throughout the country. And we represent uh, education, K-12 teachers. We represent higher education, education support personnel, health care, and public employees. So after sifting through all of the applications, judges, and we had external judges, determined that there were two outstanding programs that warranted special recognition and decided to award each of them the top prize. So the $25,000 prizes were awarded this past October when AFT leaders gathered in Washington, awarded for extraordinary accomplishments that exemplify our AFT mission and that is providing high quality public education, health care, and public services for students, for families, and for communities. So all across the country, we know that public services are facing challenges like never before. And we know that in order to address the challenges and the issues, we must reach out to all of those who have a stake in improving our government, uh, employees, administration, management, and the broader community. All of us working together can advance ideas that in Connecticut will make it a better place to live and work. So AFT Connecticut was a clear winner for its advocacy for the Health Enhancement Plan. It is an innovative approach, one that has expanded access to affordable health care for workers while saving the state hundreds of millions of dollars. I mean, what better description of success? And I also want to mention that I'm aware that Jean Morningstar, Jennifer Berrigan, and Matt O'Connor were instrumental in writing the application that so well depicted what's happening with the enhancement plan. So this plan focuses on preventive care and chronic disease management. It includes incentives for enrollment by employees, incentives for compliance, and a $100 monthly increase in premiums for those who do not enroll. So by May of 2012, and this is impressive to me, 99% of state employees had signed up to participate in the plan, leading to better management risk, lower cost for consumers, and savings for the long term. And by August of this year, 98.9%, .9%, even more impressive, of those who enrolled were following the plan. They were compliant. Now that is commendable. Congratulations. 
that will be a focus of the panel discussion that will follow is to encourage throughout the state municipalities, small businesses, nonprofit organizations to join the state health insurance pool. And this is allowed under your state legislation. You refer to it as the pooling bill. So you'll be hearing more on this topic for our, from our state employee leaders today and they are going to use some of their $25,000 prize money to publicize this opportunity throughout the state. And it should be no surprise that AFT, a very uh, innovative and responsive labor organization is receiving, uh, in Connecticut, is receiving this award from their uh, national uh, organization. Uh, I can tell you that uh, since taking office, uh, uh, we uh, have been working with uh, unions uh, uh, representing state, municipal, and, and other employees to find innovative ways to deal with a very sluggish economy, an economy which our friends in Washington have found a way to slow down just about every six months or even more frequently in some, some cases. Uh, the drag on the economy has been very difficult uh, for all of our citizenry, uh, except for perhaps the very uh, uh, top uh, layers of uh, American society who have seen their incomes gr grow mightily at the same time that middle class uh, individuals and their families have suffered uh, comparatively uh, on a decade-to-decade on a -decade, uh, basis. Um, when uh, uh, Nancy and I were sworn into office uh, in, on January 5th, uh, 2011, we all know what we faced. Uh, we faced uh, years and years and years of bad management and years and years and years of underfunding our obligations. Uh, that was a situation I did not create. Uh, it's one that I inherited. I can't complain about it because I knew what I was getting when I ran for, for office. Uh, what I wasn't quite so sure uh, is that I would find as many people ultimately willing to work together uh, to bring about billions of dollars of savings uh, for the state, which allows us to regain our stability and ultimately honor our commitments uh, to our past employees uh, as well as our current employees. Uh, the concept discussed here uh, is very, very important. Um, uh, I can tell you, uh, uh, over the last few years, I have been stopped by a number of state employees uh, or received emails or uh, messages uh, from employees uh, about a spouse uh, finding a lump in her breast because she finally went to the doctor because it was required um, uh, that, that she do so. Uh, or by uh, individuals who hadn't seen a dentist uh, in many years. Uh, and you might say, well, that's kind of a personal thing. Well, the reality is what we are coming to understand is this interconnectedness between dental health and heart health. Um, and that that is frequently the, the, the uh, uh, point of invasion uh, for various viruses that will affect uh, one's heart. Uh, or others who have discovered uh, other maladies or conditions that they are now dealing with and dealing with at a far lower cost uh, than they would otherwise be dealing with if they hadn't seen a doctor on a regular basis, if they hadn't seen a dentist on a regular basis, if they hadn't gotten the care uh, that they so richly deserve and quite frankly work for, but in some cases simply were not availing themselves uh, of it. It is estimated that this will save $1.6 billion over a, a term of years, but let's be very clear, what we all accomplished together in the CBAC discussions uh, was a new stability in the state of Connecticut, one which allowed us to save literally billions upon billions of dollars while honoring our commitments, while now fully funding our pensions, uh, while now making sure uh, that individuals are far more secure today, even through the hardship, uh, than they were uh, on January 4th uh, of 2011. This is a celebration with AFT of great ideas and uh, working together, uh, but it is also a celebration of how far we have come in the state of Connecticut, uh, where uh, we have regained our financial footing, uh, our stability, uh, and we can look uh, to the future, uh, a far brighter future than we might otherwise uh, have imagined. Um, I, I see Sal back out there. I want to thank him uh, as well as a kind of an early uh, warning system with respect to uh, what the state was doing by not funding its pensions and by not setting up a system to fund, it, to fund its other OPED uh, uh, obligations. And I have to tell you, standing here and understanding that we've cut $15 billion of obligations out of OPEB, which will allow us to honor our other commitments, is a tremendous accomplishment. You deserve some credit for that as well. The bottom line is this. There are those who will tell you that there are no win-win situations because, quite frankly, they don't want to share a win. 
And in the state of Connecticut, we only look for win-win situations, uh, when we can, uh, when we can bring it about, and when it brings further and greater stability to our state. There are those who will not negotiate, will not sit across the table, will not work with uh, other individuals, and then there is Connecticut, and I'm very proud to be part of that Connecticut. But when we see, when we come into bad times, there are no better friends than our unions to sit down with and work together to get a solution done. And you have always come up with it, and it's tough. Some of the decisions, and one of the decisions that you're honoring today, was not always accepted amongst your members. And the convincing that you all had to do to explain to them that this program is one of the best programs we've ever seen in Connecticut, that talks about how we're going to keep them healthy, how, yes, the money is there, and we're going to be saving the money, and that's important because we, we know the governor explained how bad it was when, when we all came into office. But this program deals with individuals. And the governor talks about, um, uh, you know, examples. And I have to tell you one example. I was in the dentist's office, and, and the dentist said to me, wow, Nancy, thank you, you know. I've never seen so many people in my entire life coming in. <laughs> But he said he had one man that walked in and said to uh, the, the receptionist, could you just sign this thing? You know, I don't really like coming to the dentist. I just need to sign so I can stay in the program. And the receptionist says, no, we can't do that. Just come in and have your teeth checked. She came in and had her teeth checked. He came in and had her teeth checked to find that he had not been to the dentist for something like 20 years. If he had waited much longer, the cancer in his mouth that they found would have spread. He had some of the bone taken out, but not much. And it's because of this program. We all should be proud, not only because we work together as union and management, or whatever you want to call me. Um, I've never been called management. Um, but, uh, you know, it, we don't know how many lives are really being touched by what we're doing and what you all did. And so I thank you very, very much. We have a lot of work to do together. And I believe that we can work together to make this state the best state in the union. And that we can be, make other states talk about our state is truly a worker's a state. A worker's state. For the collaboration. Uh, on this, uh, Gene, uh, on this project, uh, and to our friends in CBAC, uh, for the idea. So look, Nancy, I think, uh, was a little humble in what she just said, in that labor brought this idea to the table, and the governor and lieutenant governor could have walked away. They could have thrown their hands up and said, no, no, we're not doing that because it didn't have that short-term pop and sizzle that everybody seems to be seeking in these environments today, right? We want short-term fixes for big problems. These are big issues that often take time uh, to work through. So thank you, Nancy, to you and the governor uh, for your willingness to step up together collaboratively to get this done. Um, the other thing about big solutions to big problems is uh, the implementation is not as simple as signing the paper. <laughs> it's often big and bumpy and People rub up against each other uh, and it becomes difficult because we're changing the way we do things. Uh, and that requires a little bit of patience uh, and more collaboration, maybe even than normal, uh, to, to get us there. So when I have been in different parts of the country uh, with other people like me who count things for a living, um, I'll often meet other people in similar positions and they'll say, oh, that's an interesting thing you're doing there in Connecticut. We heard about it from one of our affiliates, um, but we can't really do this here, you know, because the unions won't let us do it. That's not true. That's not true. And every opportunity we get to push back on that idea that somehow there's a wall and there's a good ideas and the union is the wall and the good ideas come at it is just false. You know, it is this if it's going to work. So Connecticut's in a great place. Um, the health enhancement program very clearly uh, in its incentivizing people to get to primary care and wellness visits, in its opportunity for those in chronic disease states to come 
and get some either education about that or engage in care in a different way or take their meds or define it as you want to do. Um, and then to get those dental scre screenings that the dental community is very excited about because there's, they are in fact seeing a whole bunch of new patients. Um, that those very simple sounding things could change the face of, of delivery. We all anticipated, I think, long-term benefit to this, right? That if we engage in care over the long term, we're going to see long-term benefit not only for the employee or the retiree in some cases uh, and their families, uh, but financially for the state. Not only in lower health care spending, but in a decrease in things like absenteeism and presenteeism that we know that, you know, if you're just not feeling right and you don't get to the doctor or you don't have that relationship, you tend to sort of power through it. But we all know when you don't feel well, you don't feel well and you're not working uh, at a level that is normal for you. Um, but, but it was the short term gains, I think, that um, happily surprised many of us. Things like, you know, watching emergency department visits among the active employee population start to sort of go down. Now, it seems simple, and many of us who've been around healthcare reform for a long time always said, you don't want to push people further away from care, you want to bring them closer. But that was conceptual. The evidence, the academics all said, yeah, that's the right thing to do, but it was conceptual. It hadn't been sort of played out in a meaningful way in a public employee environment like this. Well, it's true, and now we have evidence to prove it. So that's great, because that, along with the rest of our learning around the health enhancement program, um, allows us to scale it for larger states or to replicate it in other places. Bugs are being worked out. But the large concepts here are good ones, and they're working. It's important to remember, finally, that the Connecticut Health Enhancement Program, with its pedigree that we've already talked about, is on the cutting edge of these kinds of innovations. I can only come up with one other state that's even close to doing what we are doing. That's exciting. And we should be proud of that. And we should be proud of the people who put it on the table and proud of the people who are receptive to it. So we can't default the thinking, uh, short-term thinking, uh, for these big solutions. Um, we got to stay away from the pop and the sizzle um, and slowly but surely chip away. Um, it's the responsible thing to do. Um, and while the early results are good, there's always more work to do. So I look forward to that work. Um, I thank you again for the invitation, and I uh, look forward to the work ahead.